Blow. It's crunch time here on the Chomp. Paul George leaving last night's game in the second quarter with tightness in his left hamstring. Remember, PG set out the first 11 games of the season recovering from shoulder surgery, but he's played in every game since his debut in November. How concerned are you, Matt, seeing this? Uh, I think he'll be all right. Yes. Just rest right now. It's, right now, it's the dog days of the season. You know, guys are waiting to get to the All-Star break, and, uh, you know, the, the game ramps up after All-Star break. But, uh, like I said, I just manage with caution. Yeah, Clippers aren't overly concerned, but they will exercise caution. And this is a team that has shown they are taking the, what did Doc Rivers say, that the Lakers are going to do whatever LeBron says. They're going to exercise caution in every circumstance. Talk about Jonathan Isaac. He's going to miss at least two months with a severe sprain and bone contusion in his left knee. Full recovery is expected, but Isaac proving to be one of the top defensive players in the league this year. Kevin, this is a, a bummer, right? This is a real bummer. He was already on my ballot, sort of the all-NBA all second team defense. Uh, he's just become a really interesting two-way prospect and actually more than a prospect. He's contributing. I, I was really enjoying watching him play. One of my favorite guys to watch. Get well soon. Glad there's no real structural damage, though. Yeah. That's a good point. So he'll be back, and he's got plenty of years ahead of him to make your ballot. Let's talk about the Nets' backcourt. Could get a little boost on Saturday. No, not from that guy. It's from this guy. Woj reporting that Karis LeVert expected to return versus the Raptors this weekend. He's missed seven weeks since having thumb surgery in November. Matt, are we ever going to see the Nets back at full strength? Because the other guy in the backcourt would be Kyrie Irving. Still yeah, with not. all due respect to Karis, people care when is Kyrie coming back. You know, I, I don't really know what's going on. I don't think anyone knows what's going on. But, uh, you know, good sign to get Karis back on the court. Very talented young player. But I think the world is waiting to see when is that guy right there on the uh, on the screen coming back. Shoulder impingement for Kyrie, I think, is still what we're calling it. Yeah. So. And it's going to be interesting to see how they distribute minutes because Dinwiddie's been playing great. Yes. Um, and there's just a lot of talent in the backcourt there. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's move on to Taco Fowl and Alex Caruso. So, as Pablo discussed at the top of the segment, they have both cracked the top ten respectively in the first returns of all-star voting. People are going to get very, very rabid about this, Kevin, but I want to remind everyone that they will not make the all-star starting group, people. It's just, you know. Oh, the pathology of Boston of sports. Yes. I mean, it is truly. Uh, no, but, I mean, hey, this is fun. I, I feel like the all-star game, there are no rules. Great. Come on. And, you know, look, of either guy, first of all, they're both fun. They're both little cult heroes in their respective teams and conferences. I've had a lot of fun watching Taco and sort of the response to him, not just in Boston, but in Portland also. Yeah, I like I like Caruso, the fact that he could walk around with his hair the way it is and dunk on people. The bald eagle. He definitely <laughs> deserves the nod. Uh, you know, Taco's a fan favorite. I, I love when fans really, this just gives fans a chance to have their voice heard. I think it's great. Yeah. But Alex, take control of your baldness. It's time. <laughs> we all had to face it one Everyone point. is hey, responsible for their ride own it to the wheels fall off, bro. choices. I'm just here to offer counsel. <laughs> <laughs> I want to revisit the news that broke earlier in the show. Adrian Wojnarowski reporting that the Pistons are escalating talks with several teams to trade Andre Drummond. The Hawks, one of the teams reportedly interested, Atlanta has discussed sending a package, this is according to Woj, that includes a 2020 first round pick via the Brooklyn Nets and the salary cap relief of expiring contracts for Detroit League sources said a potential deal would include other assets also. So, Kevin, we're discussing this during the break. I I'm a bit confused because the Hawks are 7-27 and right now, and Andre Drummond is on, if he wants to be, if he declines his player option, an expiring contract this summer. Yeah, I'm trying to figure this out from the Hawks' standpoint, and this is kind of what I've come up with. Okay, uh, we still have issues at center. Yes, we're building for the long term, but at a certain point, we need to stabilize this defense in this play. Hey, and if Andre is committed to Atlanta, it's a, it's a nice city, he wants to be there, he can grow up with this young team. Look, there are worse guys to play pick and roll for the next six years of your life mm -hmm. than Trey Young, are you kidding me? Look, I mean, not everybody has to be 20, 21, and 22, and I, I think they'd like to make a little progress. It's been a rough year in Atlanta. Yes, the expectations were measured, but they need something injected there. I mean, it's, it's just, it's kind of been stale the last couple of months. You're talking about his age. I had to look it up because right. I'm going to confess. I thought he was older but, than he is. How old is he, Matt? 26. <laughs> People thought he was, you know, past in, in his good 30s. I, you know, I know he's still a younger player, but I don't know how much sense it makes to Atlanta, but I, I think a team that definitely is looking for a big is Boston. Yeah. as long as mm -hmm. they don't have to give up too many, uh, you know, someone like a Marcus Smart or too many pieces. But they still have draft picks, you know, in their back pocket, and I think he would be a great fit in Boston. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I love it for the Celtics. The Hawks, I'm still trying to get 
kind of comfortable with. I don't it. know if this is Detroit starting trying to get a bidding war going or something like that. I do think it's an intriguing option for Boston because they do need to be bolstered in that position. And you look at most of the options out there, there are contracts and deals that would require them to, as you say, give up maybe a Marcus Smart, something they don't want to do. They love their strength at the wing. So if you could maybe be get a guy like Drummond who might be at a lower price because he is on that potentially expiring contract, mm -hmm. you can kind of have it both ways. I guess the assumption is in Atlanta with this deal they're talking about and maybe in Boston too. Maybe once he's there and you get him in the door, you convince him to stay. Right. Boston is a free agent destination for a lot of guys. Atlanta has not been as much of one, so maybe they figure this is how they can get it. But it's a great place, policy. everybody. It's From amazing. Atlanta, so Denver's here for you, but then Denver, Atlanta. Atlanta. They got a, good, a lot of good young talent in Atlanta, though. You know, so you land a piece like Drummond and, and continue to build around him. Him and Trey, like you said, a him and Trey Young pick and roll duo would be trouble. But he has to stay. It's right. his player option, and you've got to think gift. that he's going to want it. What do players want to do? Do they want to when they finally get it their depends. free agency, Matt? Yeah, I think it just depends. You know what I mean? I, I think everyone's different. You know, I think he would look at where where do I fit best, fit best first and foremost because you know centers are, are, are a dying breed in the yeah. NBA. And, and there'll be more money in 2021, but if he comes out this summer, he'll be one of the he'll bells. Be the only, he'll right. be like the bell at the ball. Him and Brandon Ingram, right. but Brandon Ingram is restricted. It, so you know, maybe the, maybe the answer is to your point. He does the old Chris Paul, I'll opt into that right. year, you know, before the trade, there's a, there's a mutual understanding. And that way a team like Boston or anybody else chasing him knows, okay, a year and a half. And by the way, now we're still free for 2021. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN+.